back and I thought what better way to start off the new year than with a studio tour. I've actually been wanting to film a studio tour pretty much since the beginning of this channel. I never got around to it and I'm kind of happy about that because I built this space mm, almost about a year ago and I feel like I'm finally at a point where everything feels right. Like I genuinely love my space and I'm just like so excited to share it with everyone. I'm really happy with everything and I hope that if you guys are interested in building your own space too or if you guys are just curious to see how I set everything up, I hope this video is helpful in some way. So I'm going to be sharing all of the details of my studio, like where I get all my equipment, what kind of supplies I use, and just try to cover everything. I'm going to be linking everything I can down below in the description box in case any of you guys are interested in anything that I have in here. Also, I posted a question box on Instagram and I did get some questions that weren't super studio tour related. So I am going to do like a mini Q&A at the end of this video just to answer the rest of those. So make sure you stay around for that. I really want to keep this intro short. So let's just get into the studio tour. Okay, so here is an overview of my studio. It's literally just the corner of a garage. So on the right side here, you see my garage door. And then on the left side, I have this divider, which pretty much just separates my studio space from the rest of the garage. This is my wheel. It is a little bit of a mess right now because I just didn't clean it the last time I used it. I got my wheel off of Amazon because I wanted a cheaper alternative when I was first starting out and I honestly really love it. It is really tiny though, it's smaller than the average wheel and it's shorter too which is why I have it on some bricks. But yeah, there's the foot pedal and I also covered this little bit with a slow studio sticker because it has the branding on it and I just, I just didn't like it so I covered it. Okay, and then right in front of my wheel I have this little wooden table. It's completely DIY'd. My boyfriend and I bought supplies from Home Depot and we just kind of put this together. But yeah, it pretty much just allows me to have a huge working surface whenever I'm throwing. So I'll put like my mirror on here, my water buckets, all of my clay, all of the pieces that I finished throwing. It's just really, really convenient to have. And I also just had to opt for this because my wheel is very, very tiny, so there wasn't much space to put my um, like my water buckets and stuff. But yeah, I really, really do love it. This is my chair. <laughs> it's very old. I just got it from my house, but I like it because it's really, really cushiony. So it's very comfortable to sit in and um, you can see where I sit. <laughs> and it's honestly the perfect height too, so it was just perfect. And then next, we have my shelves. These shelves are also DIY, so my mom actually built them and it's not built the best. It's pretty wobbly, but it works really well for me. And the way that I have it organized is by clay body because I actually work with three different clay bodies. I'm still exploring my options, you know, and playing around. So I have these labels over here. The top is for B-Mix and then I have my speckled clay and then I have my stoneware. So how I have this organized is on the left side over here, I have my greenware, so pieces that haven't been fired yet. And then on the right side, I have all of my bisqueware, which are my pieces that have been fired and need to be glazed. And then underneath on the bottom shelf, I have just a box of supplies. So these are just like random things that I use all the time. So I have paper towels, I have a brush, I use this to apply kiln wash to my shelves. And then I have scissors, because um, I always randomly need scissors. I have a little box full of letter stamps so that I can create little custom mugs. I have my immersion blender, um, I use this for reclaim. And then this I also use for reclaim, um, I just use it as a scoop. This is something for home renovation. I don't know, but it's just uh, it's just what I had and it's just what I used. And then I have my label maker. This is how I make all of the labels, like the black little labels around my studio. And that's pretty much it. Like it's just full of random stuff. And then 
underneath i have all of my reclaim so i have them organized by clay type again so this one is speckled and it's really nice because they have little lids on them so i can uh you know keep them safe and covered and then also the the little uh container has wheels on the bottom so it's very easy to slide in and out so that one's speckled clay then i have one for my bmx i actually got those containers at uh, Daiso, but unfortunately I couldn't find any more and I think they stopped selling them so I couldn't add a third one for my stoneware so that box is full of my stoneware reclaim one day hopefully I will find a replacement but for now this works and then as you can see there's an extension cord running pretty much all along my garage but I use it to power pretty much everything so my wheel is plugged into it and then right now I have my camera batteries charging and you know typically I'll plug in like my immersion blender or my phone charger whatever I need it's just really handy and really accessible and then to the left of my shelves I have this wire rack that I got from Ikea it's really really handy and it holds pretty much all of my tools above the rack I have my throwing towels, these are just towels that I can, you know, use and wash. I use these when I'm throwing or cleaning up or anything like that. And there's four of them. I got them as a pack from Ikea. Um, I have one hanging on each and then two on one of them. And then I got these hooks off of Amazon. They're just the regular command strip hooks that you can, like, um, pull the little tab on the bottom to remove whenever you want to. But yeah, I really like this system, um, and it looks really cute too. And then I have my top shelf, which is pretty much filled with supplies that I use on a daily basis. So over here, I have my throwing bowls. Um, these are just, I think they're uh, mixing bowls from Ikea. You will notice a lot in this tour that um, a lot of kitchen supplies double as pottery supplies, and it's very convenient. <laughs> But yeah, these are uh, mixing bowls from Ikea, and it's perfect because there's a big one and a small one. And I actually have four of them, but um, two of them are dirty right now. And then I have a little kitchen scale. This I use to measure out my balls of clay so that I can throw consistently. And then on top of that, I just have this little spray bottle. I use this to keep my pieces nice and wet so that they don't dry out too quick uh, before I trim them. I have a little toolbox that I also got from Daiso. And this pretty much houses all of my extra tools. So I have a ton of extra sponges in there, extra trim tools, and just random things. And then in front of it, I have this tinier toolbox. I also got this from Daiso, and this houses all of my tools that I use on a daily basis. So I got some rulers in here, some ribs, um, usually my sponges here and some trim tools and just a bunch of random stuff and then underneath it i have my sponge this massive sponge i just use to clean my studio i'll use it to wipe down the tables wipe down my shelves and um clean my bats and all that and then over here i have my ceramics notebook i pretty much just use this to sketch out all of my ideas and then also jot down like measurements and weights so that I can throw consistently. And then over here, I have my throwing mirror. Um, it's really dirty right now, I did not clean it for this tour, but I got this from Ikea and I really, really love it. It's like the perfect size and it has um, this thing in the back so you can adjust it. And yeah, I really love that. Over here, I have my two rolling pins. I got this one from Ikea and then I got this one on Amazon. I don't think this is a great material though for rolling out clay because it just sticks a lot but I do use this to kind of stamp my maker's mark so I'll use this to support the inside of a piece like for example if I want to stamp the bottom of this piece with my maker's mark I'll put it over like this so that I can stamp the bottom without it caving in and I think it's like the perfect tool for that but other than that I don't really use that much Okay, and then on the second shelf, I have all of my bats. So this organizer I got from Ikea as well. I think it's for plates or something. I don't know. 
it kind of looks like a drying rack but i use it to store my bats and it's honestly perfect and it also my bats fit perfectly on this like the number that i have so it's kind of really satisfying and then right next to it i have two plaster blocks i actually made these myself um if you guys are interested i'll link the tutorial i used down below but it was really really easy i just got the plaster off of amazon and i still have a ton left so i can make a lot more if i want to and then over here i have this little plastic crate that i got off of amazon as well so i have plastic sheets over here which i use to cover my pieces so that they don't dry out and then i have these boards that i can put my pieces on when i'm throwing and then on this side i have plastic bags and these are just uh if i need to store any reclaim or just store any balls of clay that i want to throw with in the future lastly on the bottom shelf i have my bag of dry clear glaze and then i have my kiln wash powder and then in all of these buckets i have my reclaim and i have them organized again by clay body type of course so this one says stoneware and it just looks like that inside <laughs> looks like a mess and then i have the rest of them over here so this one is my speckled clay i think i just emptied this one yeah this one's pretty empty and then i think i have like b mix and maybe another b mix but that is my reclaim system and then moving on i have my divider this divider i don't know where it's from because it was like an old thing that i just found in my house but i know there are similar ones on amazon so i'll try to link a similar one if i can find one but um i have my clay aprons here i don't throw with clay aprons honestly but it's nice to have just in case and this one is really special to me because um, my sister actually got it custom embroidered when I first started this slow studio account. I don't throw with it, but I really, really love it. Okay, and then in front of this divider on the floor, I have a box of clay that I'm working on currently. And this is a fresh clay, so no reclaim, just straight from the bag. And then I have extra clay on the bottom. That is pretty much it to my studio. I think that covers everything. Um, again, it is very, very small and very basic, but it gets the job done. And I really, really love how everything turned out in here. And yeah. So that is it for my studio tour. And now I'm going to get into some of the questions that you guys sent me on Instagram. The first one, does it get cold during the winter? So luckily I live in an area where it doesn't get super cold during the winter in general. The worst we get is pretty much just rain. I would say it does get cold, but it's not unbearable. Like I can still stay in here. So it's not that bad. Okay, <laughs> the next question I actually got five times. Um, what is your sink setup like? Do you have a sink trap or do you use the bucket method? How do you safely dispose of throwing water with clay sediment? What's your method of disposing clay water? How do you deal with clay water? <laughs> so pretty much all about clay water. Um, this was actually a big thing for me when I was building my studio. I was like, how the heck do you even do this? And I actually found a system that works for me mainly because of where my studio is located, aka my garage. So I'll throw and then I'll end up with a bucket of nasty clay water. I actually have a bucket right now. Let me show you guys. Okay, so I have this bowl of clay water. I honestly don't know if you guys can see it, but um, I always leave my clay water out for maybe like a day or two after I finish throwing and I'll wait for it to separate so that it's like, you know, clay sediment and water on the top and then I will carefully pour out the water so that it's just the clay. I dump everything into my grass because it's ultimately just water. The layer of water on top isn't super nasty or anything. And yeah, the rest I just dump into my buckets along with dry trimmings and like, you know, messed up pieces. And I just mix that all up together and then I reclaim it and then wedge it into um, workable clay again. So yeah, that's pretty much my method. It's nothing special, 
but it's working out for me. <laughs> Next question is, did you build your shelves yourself? If so, how did you know what to do? My mom actually built it for me. I didn't build it, but um, my mom is not a very, she's not a handy man. She's not a handy woman. So um, I think honestly, she just got planks of wood from Home Depot and she just nailed them together. And how I know this, uh, because there's lots of nails sticking out. <laughs> if you look from the side, there's like nails going in to the horizontal pieces, but sometimes she like missed a little bit, so it's like poking up, poking out. But um, but yeah, without this uh, wire rack here, the wooden shelves are literally like slanted. So it's not the best build job, but honestly, it looks pretty nice and it was probably a lot cheaper than buying it somewhere so i don't know i love it and i'm so glad my mom made this this was actually a shoe shelf it was a shoe shelf before i like cleaned out the garage and everything and it was really dusty and crusty and i had to clean it and now it's fine but yeah it's, it's just a basic shelf it's literally just wood planks and nails i know that for sure Okay, the next question is, okay, I got this question a lot too. It says, what type of wheel do you have? What type of clay and glaze do you recommend? Where to buy? What wheel and kiln did you get? How much was the wheel slash kiln? And how did you decide when it was time to invest? How did you decide on what wheel to get? And what wheel do you use? And how do you like it? So pretty much all about my equipment. My wheel, first of all, is from Amazon. I think it was about 180 when I got it, and I really, really like it. It's obviously not a standard wheel. It's smaller, it's shorter, it's just more petite in general, but I really, really love it for the price. I think, okay, I will just go off and list some pros and cons just off the top of my head. Um, hopefully this will help you, but pro, definitely the cost. I think that is probably the only pro to be honest, like, you know, it, it just makes sense. The cons are definitely that it's smaller, it can't hold as much weight, and the main thing for me is that it doesn't have bat pins. So anything you throw, you have to remove with your hands. So for me, I've been wanting to um, transition a little bit into throwing larger pieces, and it's harder for me because if I'm throwing like a plate, for example, or a bowl, then Oftentimes when I'm removing it from the wheel, it gets messed up because I have to use my hands and then it like, you know, dents it a little bit. But I am thinking about setting up a bat system on this thing. I'm gonna drill some holes in and then, you know, figure everything out. So if I do that, I will definitely film a video, but um, that is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So um, yeah, a really exciting project in the works, hopefully. And as for my kiln, um, my kiln is actually on the opposite corner of this corner of the garage, so it's on that corner. Um, and I have the Scut KM818. I did a ton, a ton of research before getting that. Everything kiln related was really, really complicated, but um, it took me a couple months to figure it out, but I finally did it, and I love my kiln so much. It's the perfect size, it was a good price for me, and um, it fits a good amount of pieces for me too. I wanted to invest in a kiln mainly because I was calling around uh, local studios in my area and a lot of the prices seemed a little bit high to me. I think after doing the calculation, it, it would just be more worth it for me to just do it in my own home. Since I was fortunate enough to have the space and the money to invest in one, I figured why not. Um, also, just knowing me and knowing the risk of like breaking pieces along the way and having to commute so far just to get a firing done and not being able to work on my own schedule um, because obviously the firings happen on their schedule at, at the studio. It was just a lot of things, but um, you know, obviously again, weigh out the pros and cons and see what works for you. Like I know a lot of people who go to studios to fire their work and you know, it works perfectly for them and they're able to do um, everything that they wanna do that turns out great but I just, I couldn't find anything that was convenient for me, that was worth it for the price. And um, yeah, it's also a lot of fun, you know, having control over your own firings and being able to be 
a part of like every step of the process so yeah that's pretty much all on that if you guys want to kill video i can do that too but um yeah let me know and what else oh my glazes i go to a local pottery supply store i think you can probably google or search on your own to see if there are any where you live but the main brands that i buy are amico mako and laguna and i would say out of those three my favorite is definitely mako and my least favorite is definitely laguna so you know like just just play around with it i had to do a lot of experimenting with my glazes and i'm still playing around with it and i think that's honestly the fun part so yeah okay well i think that is it for this video um it was so much fun to film if you guys have any requests at all of anything please 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 let me know because i'm really trying to film more on here and um i really want to know what you guys want to see thank you guys so so much for watching this far if you made it this far yeah okay see you guys next time bye